Aloha class, I wanted to do a video on phase um, 4-2, and this is accumulate final evidence, and then phase 4-3, evaluate the results. And so now we obtain evidence regarding the financial statements taken as a whole, not just a given transaction account or disclosure. So taking all of this evidence and looking at it as the whole entity. So usually this is done by the partner, um, also the whole audit team, but mainly the partner has that responsibility to look at everything as a whole, to, value, to evaluate if we've done um, enough work, um, and also looking at analytical procedures. Does this company as a, have a, as a whole have enough capacity to um, really produce this much revenue or generate this much income? And so the partner has to have that industry experience or just a very experienced partner to know that we've gathered enough evidence, our materiality is reasonable, and evaluate if the company is a going concern. So that going concern assumption that the company will be around in the next year, within one year they're still going to be around, they're not going to go bankrupt, or their product be illegal, right, banned as illegal by the, by the government. Um, also obtaining a client representation letter that the client knows of their responsibilities. So a lot of the fraud, um, such as Enron, the client said, well, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was happening. So the CEO, CFO didn't said they didn't know what was happening with all the fraud in the financial statements. And so Sarbanes-Oxley brought in the client representation letter where the CEO and CFO certify that they know that they're responsible for the financial statements. Um, reading other information in the annual report ensure it's consistent with the financial statements, and we don't audit management discussion and analysis. So that's not part of our audit. Um, when perform but we wanna make sure that they're saying things that are consistent. Um, when performing these procedures, you're making a final review for material misstatements. Have we done enough? If we haven't done enough, um, you can get sent back to the client to review more audit files, and that's happened to me. Um, many times when the partner just says we have we don't we haven't done enough then you just get sent back and you ask for more selections or you go review specific files that are in question and so what should an auditor do if if he or the lead partner or the concurring partner identifies something unusual or unexpected that's when you get called back to the client site and so I'd say auditing standards are evaluate if the company is going to be a going concern so the definition of a going concern, a client is assumed to be able to continue its operations or meet its obligations for a reasonable period, assumed not to exceed a year. And so they are financially stable, they're not at risk of going bankrupt, um, things like that. And so what could cause a company to not make it in the new year? So this declining economy, you know, coronavirus puts them out of business, something like that. Um, they are a non-essential business, so they have to close all their doors. Um, if that were to happen this year, we could be worried about this audit for this year. Um, if this company is not going to make it the next year, they have this lawsuit against them. Their customers go bankrupt. Um, there's a huge flood or an earthquake, or they just have too many financial um, obligations. Um, and then how might an auditor discover any of these situations? How are you going to know? Well, you could know that the economy is going bad because a lot of businesses are closing. Um, but definitely inquire, watch the news, keep your eyes open, look at analyst reports, um, read the newspaper, and include it in the client representation letter. And so, you know, management... Um, management has the responsibility um, for asserting the assertions of the financial statements that they're accurate, that they're complete, that they um, the transactions have actually occurred, um, remind management of potential misstatements or omissions in the financial statements, and to document management responses to specific inquiries about the audit. Um, so potential misstatements or, or, or omissions, if they know about certain things that are going to impact their business, that's when we remind them in the um, client representation letter. And so this, you can also read all of the risks associated with the company in a 10K. So right at the beginning of a 10K, it'll tell you all the risks associated with that specific business. Um, and so we can get some ideas there. The four main categories to be included in the client representation letter, financial statements, completeness of information, recognition, measurement, and disclosure, and subsequent events. Which, yeah, which are probably likely right now, um, subsequent events happening to companies right now, um, but probably won't affect their prior year 2000, 
19 audit must be dated the same date as the audit report, end of field work. So that's when you want to date this, right when you're done with your field work, but before the client issues the financial statements. Um, it is not a reliable audit evidence, but does show that management has been asked certain questions. It may protect the auditor if management sues the auditor because management is in charge of the financial statements. Okay, now we're moving on to phase 4-3. Integrate the audit evidence gathered and evaluate the overall results. Again, have we had enough result, enough evidence? Has, have we reviewed all the documentation? Um, evaluate the results of estimated misstatements, achieved audit risk, um, and then issue the report. So that's pretty much it for phase three. I'll move on to phase four in the next video.